Critical path analysis, also known as the critical path method, is used to identify the longest sequence of dependent tasks to determine the minimum time needed to complete a project. It highlights the tasks that cannot be delayed without directly impacting the project's overall duration. Critical path diagrams can have many different looks. We'll explain the example below shortly, but in an exam, it may be a simpler version that you see, without all of the numbers except the expected activity duration, as long as it identifies the longest sequence of dependent tasks. This project planning tool contains nodes, which are numbered milestones that mark the start or end of one or more tasks. Within the node is the earliest start time, which is the earliest time that a task can begin, and the latest finish time, which is the latest time that a task can be finished without delaying the project. There's also activities, which are specific tasks that take time and may depend on other tasks. Arrows are used to show the sequence or dependency between tasks. The duration is the estimated time to complete an activity. Float or slack is the amount of time a task can be delayed without affecting the overall project time. And the critical path is the sequence of tasks with zero float. So any delay in those tasks will delay the project overall. This example has five nodes representing five milestones of a project, starting at one and finishing at five. There are seven activities represented by the letters A through G, each with a time estimate in brackets, and let's say that refers to days. The earliest start time of the first node is always zero. The earliest start time of node two is 10 days, as it is dependent on both A and B being complete, and takes the value of the longest activity, which is the 10 days of activity B. The earliest start time of node 3 is 15, as we add the 5 days of activity C to the earliest start time of node 2, which makes 15. Node 4 is dependent on 3 previous activities, F, D and E, so we need to look at each to see the earliest start time. From node 3's earliest start time of 15, adding the 8 days of activity F gives us 23. However, adding activity D's 15 days from node 2's 10 earliest start time gives us 25, which is larger. There's also activity E's 10 days, but adding that from no 2's earlier start time of 10 only gives 20. So 25 is the largest of the three options, so that becomes node 4's earliest start time. The final node has an earlier start time of 30. Once activity G's 5 days is added to node 4's 25 day earlier start time. So the whole project in this example should be wrapped up in a minimum of 30 days, as long as there's no delays and everything runs smoothly. Now we work backwards through the diagram to work out the latest finish time. The latest finish time of a final node, number 5 in this example, is always the same as its earliest start time, so it is 30 days. Each time we take the largest time away from the latest finish time. There's only one activity between nodes 5 and 4, so 30 minus G's 5 days gives 25 days. Now we look at nodes 4 and 3. From the 25 days of node 4, we can take away the 8 days it takes to complete activity F, and that gives a latest finish time for node 3 of 17 days. That wiggle room of 2 days is called float or slack. If we reached node 3 after 15 days, we'd have 2 spare days before we must start activity F. The latest finish time of node 2 is 10, as from node 4, we take away the largest value, which is activity D's 15 days, so 25 take away 15 gives us 10. And now we're back at the beginning, taking away the 10 days of activity B from node 2 to give us 0. The starting node is always going to have a value of 0 for both the earliest start time and the latest finish time. To work out the critical path, we need the route with no slack each time. This identifies the key tasks which must not be delayed, or they will delay the whole project's estimated end time. So in this example, it is activity B, activity D, and activity G, which is the critical path. If any of these tasks were delayed, it would delay the overall project time, and it would increase it from 30 days to whatever the new one would be. So for example, if D took 17 days, the overall time would now be 32 days. We identified the float of two days on node three as we were working out the latest finish times, but there's also float on some other activities such as A. Because activity B takes 10 days, but activity A only takes five, and node two is dependent on both A and B, there's float of five days for activity A. So we could potentially start activity A on day five, and it would still not delay the overall project. Activity E also has five days of float. As a reminder, this is what a standard critical path analysis diagram may look like, but it may well be simplified in an exam 
as long as it is still showing different activities, their durations, and a critical path. Advantages of critical path analysis include that it identifies critical tasks to help focus attention on where delays would impact deadlines. It improves time management as it shows the shortest time a project can take. It helps with scheduling so teams can plan resources more effectively. And it supports what-if analysis to see the effect of delays or early starts. However, it is complex to create for large projects with many tasks. It requires accurate time estimates as incorrect data can lead to poor planning. It often doesn't actually consider resource limits. For example, there may only be one developer available for many tasks at a certain point. If tasks change, it will need to be updated and the critical path may change. And it may be hard for non-experts to understand or interpret the diagram. So critical path analysis or the critical path method is suitable for strict deadlines or limited time as it shows which tasks must stay on schedule. It's also good if clients need regular progress updates as it provides a clear way to monitor task completion and delays. However, it is less suitable for flexible timelines or frequent changes if timings and tasks keep shifting and the diagram needs to be frequently redrawn.